HR Funk here with a quick word on the video you're about to watch on the Pennsylvania Law Enforcement Firearms Qualification course. I went out to record this video two days ago and while I was at the range the temperature here was very warm and there was very little cloud cover so the sun was just beating down on my cameras and what I've discovered over the years is temperature extremes do not do good things to video cameras and that was the case this time around. For some reason and I'm sure this is heat related, the video cameras at various times at my main camera stopped recording audio. I've got video, but there's not audio. Some of it is a silent movie. And it's not all the way through. It's kind of intermittent through various different segments. So I didn't discover that until I got back home and started editing the video. And once I discovered it, it was too late really to do anything different. And that for various reasons, I really don't want to go back and re-record the entire qualification course. So what I've done is tried to salvage the video by going through and where the audio was deleted in certain segments of the video, I've tried to do a voiceover there so you can still hear me explaining what's going on in those stages and you can obviously see it in the video. Uh, my apologies to those of you watching in Pennsylvania. This was not the way I wanted to present this course, but I think you're still going to get a good idea of what the course requires, and I'm not going to change anything when I score the Pennsylvania course against the other courses in this series because of the problems with the audio. So this, it's not going to take anything away from it there. But in any regard, again, my apologies. This is not the type of video I usually like to put out but it's just what I ended up with because of the conditions that I was filming in this time around. Hi folks, HR Funk here with a brand new installment in my series on Law Enforcement Qualification Course Challenge videos. Now if you've not seen any of these videos in the series up to this point, what I'm attempting to do is to fire a Law Enforcement Firearms Qualification Course from each of the 50 states for the purpose of comparing and contrasting those courses and ultimately trying to determine what I think is the best Law Enforcement Firearms Qualification Course in the country. Now this course, or this series rather, does focus on handgun qualification courses and today's Law Enforcement Handgun Qualification Course comes to us from right next door in the state of Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania's course of fire requires the officer undergoing qualification to fire a total of 60 rounds, and those 60 rounds are divided evenly into two phases of the qualification course. Each phase of the course has four stages in that phase, and each stage has its own instructions. As always, I'll go over those instructions before I shoot the stage so you know what you're about to see. When the officer is firing this course for qualification, that officer is required to successfully pass each phase, each of the two phases, with a qualification score of at least 75% of the total score. Each phase has a total possible score of 150 points, and in order to qualify, the officer has to score at least 113 points on each phase. The way those points are tallied is with the target back here, and I have to admit this is not a Pennsylvania target. This is actually a modified Louisiana target and I was not able to get one of the Pennsylvania TQ-21 targets. So I modified this into a pretty fair approximation of that target. And just like the Pennsylvania target, there is an inside scoring area in center mass up through the neck and into the head area. And bullets striking inside that area each receive a score of five points. Shots striking outside of that center area, but still on the silhouette, receive a score of three points. And of course, any shots that strike completely off the silhouette receive zero points. So again, when everything is totaled after each phase of the course, the shooter has to have shots that total up to at least 113 points to achieve that 75% scoring standard. And without further ado, here's today's challenger. The challenger for today's course is my Smith & Wesson M&P 2.0 9mm 
Up until just recently, this was my duty pistol that I carried with me every day at work. And I carried it for about three years during that time. I found it to be an extremely reliable pistol. It's very accurate. And I think it's gonna be a lot of fun to use on this Pennsylvania course. So I'm gonna get things set up and ready to go. And in just a little bit, we're going to see how the M&P 2.0 9 mm performs on the Pennsylvania Law Enforcement Handgun Qualification Course. And here we go. The first stage of phase one of this Pennsylvania qualification course is fired from a distance of 25 yards. The shooter starts behind cover and I'm going to be behind the big barricade you can see right there. And on the signal to fire, the shooter has to draw, assume a position of cover and fire two rounds standing at the target, then kneel down and fire two more rounds kneeling at the target. The shooter then moves behind the barricade and performs a tactical reload or reload with retention, meaning the magazine that's in the pistol is saved and a new fresh magazine is inserted in the pistol. The shooter then comes up on the opposite side of the barricade, which in this case is going to be my left side as I'm looking at it, and fires two rounds kneeling from that left side of the barricade and then stands and fires two more rounds standing from that side of the barricade. There's an overall time limit on this stage of 40 seconds, and the only thing you're not going to be able to see is the tactical reload that I perform behind the barricade. I'm gonna use a different camera angle today than I normally do for stages like this to hopefully give you a better view of me shooting from both sides of the barricade, but the one thing you won't be able to see is that tactical reload from behind. Now, that being said, I think this is an odd stage for this course because the shooter at the time the tactical reload is performed has fired four shots and with my M&P 2.09 millimeter I have 17 shot magazines and with a round in the chamber I would have 18 rounds that I was starting with so still with 14 rounds left in the magazine I'm performing a tactical reload of the pistol I'm not sure why that is it might make more sense with a revolver if the shooter had fired four shots from a six shot revolver and then reloaded before firing the second half of this stage. But in any case, whether it makes sense or not, that's what the course requires, so that's what I'm going to shoot. So I'm going to get everything ready to go and we'll shoot stage one of this Pennsylvania course. And things are starting off very well. All of those shots from 25 yards are inside the five point area. I still have my retained magazine. So I did my magazine change with retention. And now it's time to move on to stage two and see how that goes. And stage two of the course is the first place where my audio decided to award itself some time off. On stage two, the shooter begins at a distance of 15 yards from the target. And on a signal to fire, the shooter has to draw and fire two rounds at the target. The shooter then moves to a position of cover and performs a reload and then fires three more rounds from the position of cover at the target in an overall time limit of 15 seconds. Now this drill is repeated one time and there's a difference between each repetition of the drill. The first time through when the reload is performed, there's more ammunition left in the pistol so the slide is closed. The second time through, the shooter begins with only two rounds in the pistol, so when the reload is performed, it's performed from a slide locked open position, and both times it's conducted as an emergency reload.
And from 15 yards, all 10 of those shots are in. I do have this one shot that touched the line, and the course description did not explain how to deal with shots that touch the line. With most courses, if a shot breaks the line or touches the line, it gets the next higher shot value, but I'm not certain about this Pennsylvania course. So I'm gonna count this as five points, but if some of you in Pennsylvania know differently, let me know in the comments section and I'll amend my score. The instructions for stage three are a little bit vague, and I'm going to read you exactly what it says in the course description. It says, start at 15 yard line. On command, walk. Shooters advance, walking toward the target. On signal, shooters stop, draw, and fire four rounds in five to six seconds, depending upon their distance from the target. Perform this drill twice. The thing that's a little bit confusing is the time limit because it doesn't specify at what distance from the target the time limit changes from six seconds to five seconds or vice versa. So what I've done is set my timer for five seconds. So wherever I am from the target, when I get the signal to shoot, I'm going to stop and fire out my four rounds within that time limit of five seconds. So that way I know I'm meeting the requirements of the course. It's also worth noting that the shooter stops and then fires four rounds. So this is not truly a walking and shooting stage. This is a walk then shoot stage. And as I said, it is repeated. So I'll fire it two times and I'll have a total of eight rounds at the end of this stage. Walk! Fire! Walk! Fire! The fourth and final stage of this first phase of the Pennsylvania course is fired at a distance of seven yards from the target. From this distance, the shooter begins once again with the firearm secured in the holster, and on a signal to fire, the shooter has to draw and fire two rounds into the body of the target, dominant hand only. The shooter then transfers the pistol to the non-dominant hand and fires two more rounds into the body of the target in an overall time limit of 10 seconds. And that's the end of phase one of this Pennsylvania course. And I have one round, and I'm not sure, but I have a feeling that was one of the shots with my non-dominant hand on that last stage because I had one shot that really did not feel good. So I've got one shot out here in the three-point area. Again, I've got this one touching the line. Somebody will have to let me know. But the way I'm scoring this for right now is a 150, or excuse me, a 148 out of a possible 150 points. So this is a passing score on phase one. Now it's time to move on to phase two. And in the course description, it says that the instructor who's conducting the course prior to moving to phase two is supposed to cover over all the holes on the target from phase one. So I'm gonna get my trusty roll of masking tape, cover all these up, and then we'll move on to phase two and give it a try. And it was in phase two, albeit unknown to me at the time, that I really started to have a lot of difficulty with my audio. And there's a lot of explanation that has to go along with phase two. The drills themselves are not that complicated, but there are a couple of extra components that are put in. One of them is that on stages two, three, and four, there is a body armor drill that's randomly inserted. What that means is when the shooter is going through those particular drills at any time, the firearms instructor can shout body armor. When that command is given, the shooter is to complete the drill and then fire one extra round into the head of the target, simulating that the first rounds that were fired were ineffective and the final headshot was required to finally stop the threat. So there are two times during this second phase that that body armor drill will be given, although you won't hear it, so I'll have to mention it in the voiceover and you can watch for it uh, as you see the stage play out in your video. 
The other thing that happens in phase two, and this is kind of interesting, is there is a command challenge that can be given. And at any time during stages two, three, and four again, the instructor can shout challenge. When that happens, the officer undergoing training has to draw and challenge the target with the firearm pointed at the target, but finger off the trigger and give verbal commands. When that's happening, the instructor can either give the command fire, indicating that the simulated uh, hostile suspect has now taken an aggressive action toward the officer, and that officer then has to stop giving commands and fire in order to defend himself or herself. Or the instructor can give the command to reholster, at which time it simulates that the suspect has complied with the officer's verbal commands, there's no longer a lethal threat, and the officer is safe in reholstering. And I do kind of like this. It adds some judgmental components to this course. Um, I hesitate to use a shoot, don't shoot, but at least it's a little bit better than just always drawing and shooting or that we saw recently in a course giving verbal commands and then shooting while you're giving verbal commands. This requires the officer to make that transition and I think that's much better. Stage one of phase two begins with a shooter standing at a distance of one yard from the target with the pistol secured in the holster. On the signal to fire, the shooter has three seconds to draw the pistol and fire two shots into the body of the target from a weapon retention position. This drill is repeated twice, and in the end, the shooter will have fired six rounds. In stage two of the second phase, the shooter begins once again at the one yard line or a little bit closer with the firearm secured in the holster. And on the signal, the shooter has to execute a palm heel strike to the face of the target, simulating a very close range attack, and then back away from the target while firing two shots to the body. And in the very first repetition of this exercise, we see the shooter receiving the challenge command, issuing verbal orders, and then a simulated compliance on the part of the suspect, and the shooter simply reholsters without firing a shot. And the second time through, we see the shooter executing those two shots to the body properly as per the course description and firing them both within the time limit of four seconds. And on the second repetition of this exercise, we see our first body armor drill. The body armor command is given after the command to fire, so the shooter has to comprehend the command and also take the appropriate action during the drill. It's not something the shooter knows about ahead of time. And in the final repetition, once again, we see the drill just executed as per the course description. For stage three of the second phase, the shooter begins at a distance of three yards from the target. And this time on the signal to fire, the shooter has to draw and fire two rounds into the body of the target in a time limit of three seconds. This drill is repeated twice for a total of six rounds in this stage. And the first time through, we see the drill completed just exactly the way it's described in the course description. The second time through, we see our second body armor drill. Again, that body armor command being given after the fire command. And on the third repetition, once again, just the way it's laid out in the course description. For the fourth and final stage of phase two, the shooter begins on the two yard line. And on the signal to fire, the shooter has to draw and start backing up while simultaneously firing five rounds into the body of the target in a time limit of eight seconds. This drill is then repeated for a total of 10 rounds on this final stage. And the first time through, we see the shooter perform it just the way I described it. And the second time through, we see the shooter get the second challenge command of the day and the shooter challenges with verbal commands and then receives the command to fire, indicating that the suspect didn't comply with those verbal commands and took hostile actions toward the officer and the officer had to fire in self-defense. So again, I like that aspect of this course. 
Uh, I think that's something that more states should look at incorporating just to get a judgmental component into their qualification course. And I think that's going to do it for the voiceover on this video. The sound is actually going to pick back up here in the final segments. I apologize again, this was not the way that I wanted to present this course. And that's it for phase two of this Pennsylvania qualification course. And all 30 of my shots are in the five point area, so that's a perfect score on phase two. So there's a lot going on in this Pennsylvania qualification course. I don't know if that comes across when you're watching it, but I've had this course for quite a while and it's taken me all this time to figure out exactly how I wanted to present it because it does have some challenges, particularly for one person, both in actually firing through the course as well as turning it into a video. Now I think I've come up with some pretty good solutions and workarounds by inserting myself as the firearms instructor to give the various commands that are necessary during the phases of the course. And I also think I've come up with ways that manage to present the course pretty much the way it would look if someone was actually going through it. This course feels like it's almost trying to do a little bit too much in some of these stages. Uh, for example, the 15 yard stage where you start away from cover, cover and then you draw and fire two shots from 15 yards, move to cover, and you do it one time with one type of reload the first time and then the same exact drill with a different kind of reload the second time with no real context there. And it's the same thing as that tactical reload in the very first stage from 25 yards. I, I kind of wish there was a little bit more thought given to some of these stages so they seemed a little bit more logical as you're performing them. But that small criticism aside, it's a pretty good course. It does have a lot of good shooting challenges. It does test a lot of critical shooter skills. So when I plug it into my course evaluation matrix, it'll be interesting to see how the Pennsylvania course uh, scores. It does have a required low light component that is a completely separate course that officers have to undergo. So this course will get credit for the low light qualification. And again, it's gonna be interesting. I think this course is gonna score pretty high but I think if I were an instructor who had to administer this course, and particularly if I had a lot of shooters all going through it at one time, it would be a little nerve wracking just to make sure everything was conducted safely and all the various criteria were met to, in order to complete the qualification. And here's one last look at today's Challenger. My Smith & Wesson M&P 9 2.0 didn't let me down, it did a great job as I pretty much expected it would. And this is the second appearance for this pistol in one of these qualification courses. Uh, it appeared once before, but I don't remember which course it was, but I thought with everything else that was going on in this Pennsylvania course today, I wanted to have a familiar firearm that was fairly simple to operate. So that's why the M&P came out for a return performance today. And that's the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, as always, make sure you forward those to me. Remember, if you order anything from Optics Planet, be sure to use my discount code, which is and if you use that discount code, it's good for 5% off anything you purchase from Optics Planet. See you next time, folks. And until then, good shooting. Bye-bye.